Hello everybody, I'm Prativa Sarma, PhD candidate from University of Missouri, Kansas City and uh, net corresponding and presenting author for this paper, um, Disaster Aware, a Global Alerting Platform for Flood Events. Uh, this paper is the application of the available models and data and platform rather than creating one for alerting about the flood globally. The platform is to remind you the alert is disaster aware. So um, disaster aware is the you know, cloud-based software maintained by uh, Pacific Disaster Center on Hawaii. Uh, it provides multi-hazard warning alerts and situation awareness information uh, like um, risk and vulnerability, hazard impact estimation, and critical needs uh, that will aid towards decision making uh, through mobile apps and web-based platform. So far, it has 7K users and 2 million apps have been downloaded um, globally. Severity of the alerts are categorized to four levels, um, namely warning, watch, advisory, and information, and users can choose the label to be alerted for. However, for the flood, um, automated global flood identification and alerting component is not incorporated yet and is done manually based on social media and other flood products from different agencies. Thus, our paper aims to fill that gap. So towards that end, um, this work has four components. First is model of models. It integrates flood, flood outputs from two global flood forecast models, now global flood monitoring system, abbreviated as GFMS, and Global Flood Awareness System, abbreviated as GLOFAS, in near real time to forecast flood severity at the global scale. Second component is obtaining inundation output using SAR imagery at a granular level. Um, this will be obtained for the high severity MOM output for the validation and calibration. Third component is the flood damage assessment in which the deep learning approach will be used. Um, to get the building footprints within the high severity areas from the MOM, followed by validation by SAR output. Fourth is end-to-end -end pipeline, that is to automate and integrate all the components together for automated alerting using disaster aware. So I'll now briefly talk about the components of model of models and methodology. Um, this flowchart shows the uh, workflow of model of model to integrate two flood forecast um, model. The point value from um, uh, output from GLOFAS, uh, raster output from GFMS, um, are in, and, and uh, global water set boundaries developed by World Research Institute, that is Polygon, are integrated for the hazard identification with hazard score. Um, this hazard score and water sets riverine risk or coastal risk values will be combined to get the severity at um, to get the severity of each water set. And based on this severity, the flood alert is created, which will be used by disaster aware. So again, I'll, I'll briefly introduce the WRI water set, GFMS, and GLOFAS. So World Research Institute developed uh, the 16,385 static, static water set boundaries that are independent of political boundaries um, as shown in the figure. In addition to this um, static boundaries, attributes such as uh, riverine flood risk and coastal flood risk is utilized in the model of model. Uh, these values will be updated annually based on inundation caused by uh, river overflow um, exposure, that is population in the flood zone, and vulnerability, um, that is flooded population and existing level of flood protection. Um, towards the global flood simulation model, uh, global flood monitoring system, GFMS, is developed by NASA and University of Maryland using real-time precipitation information from global precipitation mission satellites and implements a hydrologic runoff and routing model for flood detection. It is functional in um, quasi-global range at 1 by 8th degree or 12 kilometers patch resolution and updated every three hours. Amongst many products of GFMS, um, flood depth above threshold in millimeter, a raster product as um, shown in this image is utilized in our project. 
um, zonal statistics is performed over the water set using this raster and statistics such as area and um, percent area in water set impacted by a flood, um, mean and max flood depth above baseline, and um, duration of flood is used as weighing factors towards the hazard score. So second flood forecast model, GLOFOS, is developed jointly by the European Commission and the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecast and is also independent of political boundaries. Uh, the GLOFOS output is the point data um, with the information on the upstream river conditions. From the GLOFOS product, the ensemble predictions of events with return period 2, 5, and 20 years, um, alert level, medium, high, or severe, and peak forecast in days are utilized towards generating the hazard score for each water set. So uh, from, from the 10 products, 5 from GLOFOS and 5 from GFMS, Score is assigned based on weighing and weighing and um, score criteria as shown in this table. For example, for every flooded thousand square kilometer flooded water set area, one point is assigned, um, the maximum being ten, uh, and so on for other products. So, hence total hazard score with maximum value hundred is thus assigned. Um, the severity value is then the cumulative distribution function of hazard score. The CDF function is a long normal distribution function with a scaled river in risk as mean and a unit standard deviation. So flood alert for affected water scene is then created um, based on the severity score. For example, if the severity is greater than 75%, um, warning alert is created for the given water set. Similarly, if um, severity is greater than 50 and less than 75, then watch. And if, um, and if greater than 25 and um, less than 50, then advisory and so on. So uh, this map shows the M1 result for the African flood on June 6, 2020. Red, orange, yellow, green water sets respectively have warning, watch, um, advisory and information flood alerts. Um, uh, this year, um, Central and East Africa, particularly the countries of Kenya, uh, Somalia, South um, Sudan, South Sudan, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo, uh, experienced severe flooding this past spring as, um, as greater and more widespread than normal rainfall occurred during their you know, long rain season. And the MOM output seems to be doing a good job identifying the floods. Um, this image here is um, is the centroid of the affected watershed area. So, um, the second component is updating inundated areas from SAR images. Um, this flowchart briefs the methodology to get the inundated areas. Uh, the C band, the C band SAR images from the Sentinel 1A um, B satellite is used for the project. First of all, the high severity water sets obtained from MOM is used as input sub, sub files to get the high resolution um, ground, ridge, ground range detected images from NASA's Alaska Satellite Facility and Distributed Active Archive Center. Uh, this GRDH product is pre processed using um, Sentinel 1 toolbox to the usable form. Um, this pre processed product is resampled to common grid and cropped, so they all share the same pixels. This image is then uh, splitted into numerous set of tiles so that each tile could be analyzed separately. For each tile, um, maximum normalized between class variance method, PCV variance method, is applied to get the S by S box size, which is the maximum number of bimodal histograms. Now the um, automatic thresholding algorithm is applied to each box to determine the threshold for that box. The process is repeated for each box of each tile to take the average to threshold uh, the tile um, and hence based on this threshold, binary products of the image is captured and finally just the inundated areas. Um, this is the inundation output uh, from the SAR images uh, targeting um, the Vadodara, India as a case study for the um, date uh, July 7th and uh, July 20, 2020. The upper images are the pre-processed and resampled to common 
um, GRDH, common grid GRDH products. And these images below are the final binary products showing the water only. If closely seen, uh, the change in the inundation can be noticed in the latter date in, in, in these circled areas. Um, so the third component of the project is using deep learning approach for the damage assessment. Um, towards this component, uh, the job that is accomplished so far is um, extraction of building footprint using deep learning approach, um, you, you know, using remote sensing images. Uh, in this case study, we have used the Google Earth image. First of all, the image undergoes um, a regional feature aggregation method that is region of interest align, ROI align method, as proposed in mass RCNN. It uses bounding boxes to extract partial features within the bounding box. Um, the extracted features will be used to classify if it is a building or background. Um, the first convolutional layer each ROI align passes is VGG16 network. Um, here in the image size is to re size is reduced to one by 32 of the original size. Um, the second convolutional layer um, draws a binary mask that can find the building accurately. Uh, the classify layer is the full connection network, FCN, that classify if it is a building or background. Lastly, the classification and the binary mask are combined to get the um, building footprint. So this is the same Im image as shown before for the Johor Somalia. Um, with the you know with the uh, inundation inundated extent and depth information from this R output, uh, we aim to estimate the number of buildings affected using this building footprint and possibly the dam damage extent uh, you know towards the situational awareness. So um, this work is still ongoing and the future works for us are to calibrate the um, plot forecasted output and severity score from MOM using other global pro global products such as DFO products, Dartmouth Flood Observatory products, and DFO, and uh, PDC manual hazards, uh, global flood detection system output, and some regional uh, models such as rapid infrastructure flood tool uh, developed by Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. Um, this all will be utilized for finding the events missed by MOM and update the severity. So towards the earth observation and damage assessment, of, um, flood depth data will be accessed in addition to the SAR flood extent. And finally, and that uh, depth and flood extent will be utilized um, for the flood damage assessment. So, if, um, and finally, all the components will be integrated and automated and, and the whole process to generate alert based on severity score and generate the situational awareness information as much possible for disaster aware to integrate and emanate. Um, so that was my last slide and I'd like to thank all of you for your time and patience and uh, any questions.